You know, a lot of people complain nowadays that you know, they feel like they're enslaved. But I was thinking about it yesterday, and I realized nobody really articulates why they feel enslaved, and it's not a topic that's really studied. So I tried to think, what are the things that you see in traditional slave societies? And I came up with five traditional elements of slavery. The first one, I think, is what Karl Marx said, that when people lose the means of production, they become enslaved. Um, if you have to work for someone else on their terms, it's very difficult to have much autonomy. A hundred years ago in America, most people controlled their means of production. They worked in businesses that they owned themselves or they were part owners of, or they farmed land that they owned themselves. Whereas today, very few American workers control their means of production. Number two, Slaves generally don't have any effective access to political power. The power structure is beyond their reach. And I think we meet this criteria in America as well. Power structures today have coalesced so high above the heads of the average person that no one can effectively have any influence over their elected officials. A hundred years ago, most power structures and governing structures were more local, and you had some hope of exerting some kind of influence over your elected officials. And just as importantly, if you weren't happy, you could always move to the neighboring jurisdiction and escape that power structure. But today, with national and to a degree international power structures, the average person has no effective control or influence in government, and they also have no effective way to escape this power structure. So again, in the last hundred years, we've moved from a condition of freedom to one of slavery. Number three, and many people have pointed this one out, slaves are usually forced to pay heavy tribute or tax to their rulers. And in this way, we're more enslaved than almost any other people in history, as, as has been said by several people. Um, when I was thinking about it, I, I do believe that some free societies have a form of tax or, or get the people in those societies to contribute to community projects. But there's a fundamental difference. Number one, slaves are taxed to the maximum extent possible before they revolt, whereas free people generally aren't taxed to such a heavy level. And it's the method by which the free people are taxed. Uh, free people are usually f encouraged to participate in community projects by peer pressure, and at the worst, by banishment, whereas slaves are never banished. You're not going to banish a valuable possession. So slaves are forced to pay tax with the threat of violence. And in this way, again, we meet the criteria of a slave society, not the criteria of a free society. And once again, 100 years ago, we didn't pay anywhere near as much tax as we do today. I mean, 30 to 50 percent of your total income goes to tax. Um, that's more than most, almost any historical slave societies. And number four, which I've talked about in other videos, slave societies generally have some type of uh, economic debt-based structure that keeps the slaves indentured. So, for example, you see money being issued as credit or um, company script being issued to slaves. And in the United States, we have a debt-based currency that's issued by a small elite group that's allowed to issue this currency to the rest of the population. This ensures that the general population remains in debt and that they can't really retain wealth and ever pay off that debt and their children remain in debt and it just perpetuates a cycle of debt and debt servitude. Um, so number five, a kind of a systematic abuse that conditions the slaves to abuse and destroys their sense of self-worth. Now, this is the one way of the five ways that I thought of in which traditional slave societies operate. This is the one, one condition that we don't meet in our current society. I don't know whether it's because we don't have such a strong tradition of, of enslavement, or whether we, we have an armed populace, but for whatever reason, I don't believe we have a systematic abuse of the, the population. And that's something that you see particularly in the worst slave societies. So 
I do think, though, that we meet four out of the five criteria of a slave society, uh, and we didn't meet any of those criteria 100 years ago in America, generally, uh, and even in Europe and in you know, the most oppressed people in America maybe only met a few of those criteria a uh, 100 years ago, whereas today almost everyone meets four out of the five traditional criteria of an enslaved people. So personally, I feel there's a very strong argument that we are a slave society, we are an enslaved people, and that this has happened to us just over the last few generations. Um, and I like to focus on solutions in videos, though, so I'm going to get to potential solutions in a minute. But first I wanted to talk about something that's a little more nebulous, and that is, on a broad term, why people become slaves. In my opinion, ultimately people become slaves because they have a slave mentality. If you have a slave mentality, you'll tend towards slavery, and if you have a free mentality, you'll always tend towards freedom. People enslave themselves, in my opinion, to a large degree at least. Uh, so what is a slave mentality? Well, one thing is always looking to the master or the rulers to fix any problem in their life. Slaves willingly give up control over their lives to the ruling class because they don't look at, at how they should fix their own problems. They always want the government or the rulers to fix everything for them and perpetuates the system of control over the slaves. Secondly, Slavery is always short-term the easy path, I believe, and freedom short-term is the difficult path. Uh, so I think you'll generally see people with a slave mentality having a short-term view and taking the easy way out. For example, someone who's addicted to drugs or alcohol, always easier to have another hit, have another drink, rather than break that addiction. If someone is in debt, it's always easier to run up a little bit more debt rather than start the difficult process of paying off the debt. If someone's being bullied or uh, there's a tyrant, it's always easier to give in, give up a little bit more of your freedom rather than stand up or, or try to find some effective way to escape that uh, control. So I think another key component of a slave mentality is kind of a sense that uh, the, you need to take the easy way out rather than working for a long-term gain. Uh, so what's the solution to all this? Well, I know it sounds a little bit harsh and it's kind of difficult for anybody to even admit that they basically are a slave, but once you face it, uh, I think that's the beginning of, of solving any problem is just to become aware of the problem and face it. If you can adopt the mentality of a free person, you have one enormous advantage because you're no longer being told by your rulers or your fellow slaves what you need to do in your life to fix all the problems. You're not chasing around imaginary terrorists who happen to be located in the energy-rich regions of the world. You're not trying to eradicate poverty by subsidizing poverty. You don't have to spend all your time trying to figure out how to kill and steal from your fellow slaves the way rulers have always encouraged. Um, you can actually use your own intelligence, your own intuition, your own courage, and your own compassion to find solutions within your life and in the lives of others based on what you feel is right, not based on what your rulers tell you you need to do. And that's an enormous advantage when you regain all of that power that you had wasted in the past running around doing what your rulers told you to do, which was ultimately to kill and steal from your fellow slaves. But now let me get back to specific solutions to the four ways in which most people are enslaved today. And first of all, I wanted to say that um, although I'm going to go over specific solutions, I do think that historically, you know, movements, collective movements towards freedom have had great success. And it's really encouraging to see so many people reawakening to the concept of freedom for the first time in generations. And I, I do think this will have an enormous positive impact in the future. But I wanted to focus more on individual specific solutions. So number one, people have lost the means of production. In my opinion, it's kind of straightforward. Uh, you simply have to make the sacrifice to regain the means of production. Whatever you choose, whether it's starting your own business, 
working for an employee-owned company, joining a commune where the people collectively own the means of production and own the land, but doing something to regain the means of production so that you are not held at the whim of your employer. Uh, it's not your employer, your ruler's obligation to give you a, a happy work environment and to fulfill you as a person and help you rise out of your condition. That's your responsibility. People waste so much time and energy complaining about their work situation rather than actually doing anything about it. Um, it's your responsibility to work your way out of slavery. It's no one else's responsibility. Next is the fact that people have no effective control over their ruling structure. Uh, when, when you have a national government that places most of the restrictions on you, the, the average person basically has zero control over that. Um, and I think the best solution I've ever seen to this, beyond hopefully uh, eventually a collective movement, the best solution I've seen is uh, in the book uh, How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World, which I've talked about in the past. Uh, the book How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World by Harry Brown goes into a long, detailed philosophy on how to deal with oppressive governing structures. And basically, although large, distant governing structures can be incredibly oppressive and impossible to influence, they also tend to be very slow and easy for a motivated, focused uh, individual to outmaneuver. So that, I think, is one of the best solutions I've seen to the problem that the average American today has no access to political power and no ability to escape the power structures which control them. Um, read How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. Number three, uh, the average American today is taxed more heavily than most slaves in history. Again, refer to the solution in number two. Read How I Found Freedom in an Unfree World. Uh, also, once you regain the means of production, you have a lot more flexibility in legally finding tax loopholes and escaping tax. Uh, the the mega-rich put plenty of loopholes for themselves so that they don't have to pay the tax that the proletariat pays. Uh, once you are your own boss, you can hopefully uh, escape quite a bit of tax. And number four, the fact that we have a debt-based currency. If you don't know the answer to this one, you haven't seen any of my past videos on money, the solution to a debt-based currency is no longer hold that currency, hold precious metals or anything else that retains value. Don't hold a debt-based currency. You're never going to work your way out of slavery by playing into the hands of uh, the people that issue you this credit. So those are the solutions that I see. I'm sure there are many others, and um, I'm happy to uh, I try to answer any questions or comments in the comments section. Uh, just my thoughts on a topic that gets discussed a lot, but not really discussed in detail.